All right, guys, I don't have time to think of some stupid intro for this video today because I am just way too excited. We're gonna unbox a guitar I've been waiting to own for years. Let's do it. All right, guys, hope you're doing great out there today if this is your first time here at my channel. My name is Kyle, and what I do is I take all sorts of awesome high gain related guitar gear, record it with a simple setup, and I give you the un- oh, and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end. But we're gonna skip all the rest of that stuff because I have a guitar here that I have been waiting years to own. I have never even seen one of these in person. They have been discontinued in the United States for a long time and I am just super excited to finally have one of these in my hands. So without further ado, we're gonna skip the backstory. We're gonna unbox the guitar and then we'll get into the backstory and then we'll get into a couple of riffs just to uh, see how this thing plays, see how it sounds, see if it lives up to my inflated expectations. So let's do it. Old Stabby equipped and here we are. This was delivered about half an hour ago I am not going to let it acclimate <laughs> at all because uh, with poly finished guitars, you don't really need to worry about that. Just a little tip. If you're talking nitro finishes, yes, it is important to let them acclimate because if you don't, you open it up. The drastic uh, temperature and humidity change may cause the finish to crack and check unnaturally. But unless it is like, you know, well below zero outside, and it's really, really warm inside with polyurethane finished guitars. You don't really need to worry about that. So just a little tip for you. And honestly, feeling the box in the case, it's not really cold to begin with. So we should be good. All right, let's see if I can get this guitar out of the box without having to pull all the packing out. So this guitar popped up um, on the My Les Paul forum, actually, because I was making a post about my new Gibson Les Paul that I bought, which I don't know if I will have posted that video by the time this films or not. I've already hit my camera. This is going well. So anyways, while I was browsing that forum, I forgot that oftentimes I've found good deals uh, in the user classified section of mylespaulforum.com. So I decided to go ahead and check through the listings that were there. And of course, the first thing that I see when I popped up is this guitar. Now you can probably already see excuse me, <laughs> what brand of guitar it is because of the case. And uh, yeah, if you, uh, if you know anything about ESP cases, this is a pretty old style case. So we're just gonna get into it, man, because I wanna see this thing for myself in person so badly. Here we go. There she is, the legend in the flesh. Needs cleaned up a little bit, but honestly, it is not in bad shape at all. Kind of feel like Wilson from Home Improvement. Hi there, neighbor. Having guitar problems? All right, guys, so no more games, no more playing around. I'm just gonna pull the guitar out, and here we go. Yes, it is the four knob ESP Eclipse model. These were basically only available in Japan for a while. They have completely discontinued them as far as I know uh, due to legal reasons. And you have not been able to purchase these new in the US for quite some time. This one actually appears to be a 2005 model. It's in good shape. The, the hardware and stuff has some tarnishing. Honestly, it's in really good condition. First of all, let's get this case out of the way. But yeah, look at the top. I mean, it, it just needs a little wipe down, but overall, man, this thing is in really good shape. The only blemishes are on the back, and that was kind of the reason for the price that I got on it. I got a pretty good price on this guitar, but it's got a ding right there. And then here on the bottom, it's got a pretty significant ding. I'll see if I can kind of get it to zoom in, but that one is actually down into the wood. A big chip of wood is gone. There's some finish kind of smashed into it. So I actually really want to use this as an opportunity because uh, I mean, as long as everything goes well with this guitar, like if I set it up, I play it, I really enjoy it. This is a forever guitar. This is something I'm gonna keep for myself for a long time because I don't know, man, these, these old four knobs, just the shape and everything, I think that this is like the ultimate Eclipse body. That's just me, but I've wanted one of these for so long. And honestly, in person, it looks it looks even better. In the top carve, I was not expecting this. I'll see if I can get it in the camera here. The top carve is much more significant than I was expecting. It has like a Les Paul style dish, it's called, where the top carve actually digs in, like down in. 
And uh, I just think that that's a cool little touch. Playing it, it might make it slightly more uncomfortable, but that's all right. As long as we look cool, who cares about comfort? We're belligerent amateurs for God's sakes. But yeah, man, I am super excited about this. So just to show you the difference in the body shape, I have my E2 Eclipse over here. Uh, looks to be a 2016 model. Here's the E2 Eclipse and here is the old four knob version. That's about the best that I'm gonna be able to do for the moment. So here on the E2 Eclipse, uh, the body actually is a little bit, maybe a tad bit thinner. That carve up top here is not as extreme as well. And then we've got the three knob control layout here. So, I mean, it's obviously still fantastic looking guitar. One thing that ESP does to their ebony boards, a lot of companies used to do, and I see that they're not doing it as much. They used to dye them like black, black, and then they polished them. So they were literally like a mere shine. And I love that feel of the ebony boards that have that done to them. I think that they feel incredible. It's one of the reasons why I've always loved the ESP Eclipse because their fretboards just feel, just feel so like these are such a comfortable, nice feeling guitar to play. Um, and it looks to be kind of the same deal on this old four knob model. This one's nice and light too. That, uh, that uh, E2 is actually a little bit heavy. Obviously, that's going to vary guitar to guitar. Um, the neck on this one feels pretty chunky, feels pretty fat. I personally am a fan of that. I really like the thin U uh, neck shape on the LTD EC1000 series, the necks that they have put on those for quite some time. I think those are actually really comfortable. One of my favorite thin style necks, but overall, I tend to prefer a thick neck on a guitar. And man, this just has a nice kind of, you know, Les Paul feel neck to it. Feels really nice in the hand. I can't wait to play this thing. Looks like we still have the original nut up top. Um, so we've got the original bone nut that these would have come with back then because we still have that, uh, that vintage yellowed out kind of finish on it. And then the owner that I bought this off of, he actually changed these out for EMG Metalworks, the EMG X pickups, which I haven't played these pickups in probably close to 10 years. It has been a long time since I played the EMG 81X. Kind of curious to see how those sound because it's been quite a while since I've gotten to try those. But in the case here, he threw in the original older EMGs. And these old ESP cases are nice, actually. They're kind of nicer than the newer ones, if we're being honest. Here are the original pickups. But yeah, the inside, they kind of have this nice foam top. Uh, the inside of the case feels real solid. And it's got a, a nice, like, real nice flush compartment here. Um, I have a bunch of these ESP cases because I always kind of hang on to them for my EC1000s and stuff whenever I get them in. But this is uh, just kind of a nice old school one. Just kind of goes overall with the theme of the guitar at the moment, but ah, uh, I'm so excited. One thing that I love, this has these Spurzel locking tuners on it. I Honestly, I don't remember if they come with these stock or not or if they came with these stock, but uh, a lot of the other Eclipses have these Goto or Goto, however you pronounce it style, tuners where you literally have to use a flathead screwdriver to lock them. I absolutely hate these with a burning, burning passion because they make string changes so much more difficult than they need to be. And uh, pretty soon I'm probably actually gonna remove these tuners from this guitar and put something else like the Graftech ratio tuners or something on here because I hate these things. I absolutely hate them. On this side, I am very used to these Spurzels because for the longest time, the EC1000s came with these tuners on them. And then on the back, we have the old ESP Standard Series circular logo. I gotta say that I really miss uh, just the ESP logo on these in general. Like the E2, it, it doesn't bother me, but I just liked it. I thought ESP was such a, it was just a cooler branding. E2 was kind of, eh, whatever. But it, it definitely doesn't keep me from wanting to own these guitars, from lusting after them. But man, I'm looking at this thing in the cameras and it just looks so sick, dude. I am, I'm super pumped to finally have one of these. This is definitely a cool points guitar and nothing more. There's nothing better about this guitar over the E2 Eclipse or the ESP Eclipse uh, 2. Um, I have a white ESP Eclipse over in the corner as well. There's nothing better about these guitars than those guitars. I just think aesthetically it's cool. And it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of like a cool points type guitar. So if you care about that thing, cool. If you don't, I don't blame you at all. Uh, a lot of the times I will straight up admit that certain things that I own are just for like the nostalgia 
and you know cool points on my end it's like cool i have that like the block letter 5150 that i recently got that has all of the original usa tubes in it that's that's a cool points thing for me that's from a collector standpoint that's a really cool item to own and from a collector standpoint this is a really cool guitar to own so let's tune it up real quick all right guys so i have two the guitar up and this thing definitely needs a little work as far as the setup goes um it looks like at some point maybe some heavier gauge strings were on this and now they are sitting really really low in the nut so because the strings are so low at the nut they are just buzzing off the frets unfortunately so we're gonna have to do some work to figure that out And more than likely, if I go to plug this thing in, which we are gonna do, we're gonna plug it in and riff on it for a minute just because it wouldn't be a belligerent amateur unboxing if we didn't. But uh, more than likely, we're gonna get some string slap. We're gonna get some noise through the amplifier and everything else. Uh, so I'm going to have to do a slight bit of setup on this thing in order to get it in fully playable functionality. And also, the person who sold me this guitar watches the channel. I appreciate it, man. But I'm gonna bust your balls a little bit. What the hell are you doing wrapping the strings this many times around the posts when you have locking tuners? The whole point of the locking tuner is you pull it through the lock locking mechanism of <laughs> the tuner shaft, you tighten it up, and then you just give it a couple cranks to get it up to tune, and it just makes string changing that much easier. You don't have to wind it a whole bunch of times. I'm not sure, he's got these strings wrapped around these posts quite a bit that is actually going to affect the tuning ratio because the strings are wrapped around themselves. And therefore, when you turn the actual tuning key, it's gonna have a different ratio to pull than it would if you were just wrapping it around the post. You have altered kind of the ratio that's supposed to be there stock. So I just think that that's a little goofy uh, when people like, wrap their strings like crazy around these locking tuning tuner mechanisms but other than that man it doesn't appear that this guitar was really played all that much at all i mean there is hardly any fret wear on this thing um yeah this is this is going to be good for a long time to come and uh yeah overall man i'm happy with the purchase so far let's plug it in let's see if we can get some playable tones out of it because the way it's set up right now might be a little bit tough. I might make a couple little tweaks off camera. Let's hear some belligerent amateur riffage on this thing. Let's go. All right, guys. So I have cleaned the guitar up a little bit. I gave it a, a little bit of a setup tweak. I have found some things with this guitar that I'm going to share with you guys in just a minute. But uh, we are going into my EVH 5153 50 watt here. We are going into an EVH 212 cab. I have a Weber Grey Wolf speaker in this cabinet and we've got an sm57 and i just got a heil pr30 microphone as well so we're gonna see if we can combine those and get some cool tones i have my typical boost board off to the side uh so when giving this thing a little bit of a setup tweak it looked like it needed uh, a little bit of neck tension added because there's a little bit of a bow down here you should always have a little bit of one but this one was a just a tad too much but when I went ahead and added some tension, I noticed that the neck has a little bit of a wave in it. So the frets almost come up like this and then go back down into that natural neck shape. And uh, that has me a little bit concerned, to be honest. Another thing that happened is when I plugged this thing in, it I was getting all sorts of static. I was getting all sorts of weird stuff going on. So I have a feeling that this guitar has been sitting a while and has not been played in quite some time because with as clean as the guitar is everywhere else except for those two dings on the back here um this guitar does not appear to have been played a whole lot so it's quite possible that this thing has been sitting in a case for a while i mean this is a nearly 20 year old neck the mat is still on the finish like there is no uh, there's no sheen to the back of this neck so I don't know if maybe that uh, that little hump in these, it really is, is affecting frets two and three, has been in the guitar for quite some time and the guitar just never got played by its previous owners because they couldn't get the setup right. I know personally that um, when I tightened up the neck to get some of this relief out of here, that actually seemed to push these frets up even more, which is why we were getting that 
you know, pretty significant fret buzz when we pulled it out of the box. I seem to have gotten it a little bit better, but I'm just kind of hoping that this guitar was maybe not set up for a long time and that bow in those top couple of frets there is something that will eventually work itself out after the guitar gets acclimated to my environment here and after I get it set up properly and kind of keep tweaking the setup over the next couple of days, couple of weeks, whatever ends up happening as the guitar gets acclimated. But I'm gonna message the seller on that and just tell them that I wanna keep an eye on it because that is, that's a little concerning. There are ways around that. If that bow in that neck stays that way, we can kind of knock down the first two or three frets. But I really don't wanna do that. Like the frets on this thing are super clean. I don't wanna take any anything off the frets if we don't have to. So otherwise, I gotta be honest, I played a couple riffs on this thing when I was setting up uh, my rig here, and it sounds awesome. So without further ado, let's hear this thing in action. There's that noise. It's, it's a little, it's a little nerve wracking. This is a guitar that I really want to work out for myself, but so far things have not been fantastic off the bat. Yeah, it's a little frustrating, a little bit frustrating. That is with a gate on in front of the amp. That's how loud this noise is. The guitar seriously fell out of tune. That's another thing, it is not wanting to be in tune. Like the intonation definitely needs adjusted a little bit. I adjusted the low E to try and get it at least usable for this video. The strings are all binding in the nut. Every single one of them are binding in the nut. Uh, you can hear that when you're tuning and you hear a little plink. That means that your string was caught in the nut and then it all of a sudden had enough pressure to finally release itself and snap into tune. Uh, luckily, I just got some Big Ben's Nut Sauce and I just got some fret files, so we'll kind of work on those a little bit too. This guitar needs a little bit of work, but we're gonna, we're gonna try to see it through. All right, I do not hate these pickups whatsoever. I don't. I actually like them quite a bit. They are definitely more open on the top end than say a regular EMG. All right, final riff, Dropsy Hardcore Riff. We'll call it a day on this unboxing. Little, little touch and go here, but.
I, I think we can make that work. Guys, that is gonna do it for me today on the ESP Eclipse One, the four knob Japanese Eclipse. What do you guys think about this guitar? Uh, am I an idiot for coveting this thing just because it has a slightly different aesthetic than the E2 or the ESP Eclipse 2? Uh, or are you also like me and just like buying things like this for the sake of collecting something cool, something to collect uh, that's a little harder to get your hands on? God, I'm looking at this in the camera. This is such an awesome looking guitar. I'm so glad I bought this. <laughs> so regardless of what you guys think, I am happy with my purchase. I will keep you guys updated about some of the issues that I found on this thing as we move forward, but I don't think that, that this thing is gonna go anywhere. I think this is gonna stay in my collection for quite some time. Really happy to own this guitar, but of course, let me know what you thought down in the description, down in the comments, not the description, the description's where I type. If you wanna support the channel, down in the description are where all my affiliate links are, including Zounds and Sweetwater. And if you guys shop with those retailers, it's really the best thing that you can do to help this channel by clicking those affiliate links whenever you shop there because I get a little kickback. It costs you nothing extra. And that's uh, it's kind of one of the main ways that I put food on the table and one of the main ways that I'm able to afford more gear for more content for you guys. So I really appreciate it. I'm gonna wrap it up right there. Thanks so much for watching guys. Kyle here again. We'll see you next time. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp. There we go.